The views expressed on this broadcast of the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show are those of the co-host and guest and do not necessarily reflect those of our affiliates. The topics and opinions on today's show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice. Take 12 Radio is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. And now, here are your co-hosts, Nathan A. and the Monty Man. The group is Death Leopard. The song is Wasted, something that way too many of us spent most of our time doing at one time or another, uh, perhaps in our youth, perhaps even recently for some of you. Hopefully, you're clean and sober and or sober or however you want to use the proper language. Forgive me if I don't get it exactly right for all you AA or NA purists out there. Welcome to Take 12 Radio. The uh, the only the world's only recovery radio talk show that is addressing the issues that uh, are so desperately needed to be addressed twenty four seven Monday through Friday with workshops and and recovery music and recovery recording artists clinicians celebrities authors and you the uh, the folks out there that are living in a state of recovery from a sem- seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Um, we are the world's only faith-based, solution-focused recovery radio talk show broadcasting uh, on internet radio, on terrestrial radio over the Grace uh, Graceful Living Network, on the Bill Post Radio Network uh, out of um, the Pacific Northwest, and all over the world. Welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, it is good to have you with us. Nathan is not with us uh, this week. He was uh, not with us last week. We have a special that we were doing uh, celebrating Recovery Month. And uh, the week before he was, and before that, he was hunting, going out to get his his elk to feed his family. And uh, he is really sick. And I will tell you that Nathan Adams is one of these guys that pushes himself way too hard. He's very committed to his family. He's committed to his work. He's committed to people in recovery as well as his own recovery. But sometimes he pushes too hard. So this is what I want you to do. If you would be so kind to send an email, uh, attention Nathan, send it to take12radio at comcast.net and simply say, Nathan, Slow down. And then we'll get those to him, and uh, he'll probably just ignore it, <laughs> like most of us do that are passionate about what we do. Nathan, but you got to slow down, brother. Take care of yourself. Get well, would you please? All right. Uh, this is the last show, a last open forum show uh, during the month of September, which is National Recovery Month. That's what we've been celebrating all month. It has been a wonderful time. Mark Aranzi from Arizona drove all the way down from Scottsdale uh, to Albany, Oregon to spend uh, a week with us. He traveled with me to uh, Free by the Sea in Ocean Park, Washington. I met the folks there. They are our new, our, our most recent sponsors. And uh, as a matter of fact... Uh, if it wasn't for Marco, I wouldn't have been able to do all I did here in the last two weeks. It is amazing work uh, that we've been involved in. I say it's an amazing, amazing work because it's been amazing people that we have been uh, been linked to and, and hitched our wagon to. The folks at Recovery Northwest Project, uh, uh, Barbara and, and Joe and, uh, and uh, Fletcher and uh, Patty Katz and all, and all the gang. Uh, thank you so much for all you guys do. It's been such a blessing to be working with you. Um, so uh, National Recovery Month is coming to a close. And uh, next week we'll have a brand new show uh, for you. We'll be announcing the winner of this week's trivia. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. This week, Take 12 Trivia is going to be surrounded around pizza. Pizza trivia. Now, uh, this particular show this week is dedicated specifically to my incredible, um, just phenomenal mother-in-law, Henrietta Pierce, uh, Joe Pierce to be specific. 
Uh, I believe she would have been 79 uh, today. Uh, my my mom, my mother-in-law, uh, passed away here not, not too long ago. And uh, we miss her terribly. And this is her birthday. And I, I have to tell you that uh, one of the prayers that, that I prayed years ago was that whoever I married, that their parents and I would get along <laughs> because I watched so many of my friends get married and have in-law problems uh, just to beat the band. And I want to tell you that God answered my prayer. Um, my father and mother-in-law uh, were two of the most uh, kind, gracious, giving people I have ever met in my life. And uh, we 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 lost uh, Dell here several years back, and and then Henrietta here not too long ago. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, I I was incredibly uh, engulfed in love and acceptance by these two folks, just tremendous people. And uh, I tell you, if you are fortunate enough to have a father in law and mother in law like these two, um. Uh, you, you do not take them for granted. Do not hesitate for one minute to tell them how much you appreciate them and how much you love them. It is so important. So this show is dedicated to my mother-in-law, Joe Pierce, uh, Gultra, Joe Gultra Pierce, Joe Pierce, and she remarried uh, and uh, uh, to John, and John is still with us. In fact, uh, I have a date tonight with John uh, to watch the uh, last episode of Under the Dome. That's a whole other story I'll talk to you about sometime. Uh, but this show is dedicated to to her. And for that reason, uh, we're going to do pizza trivia. Now, the reason we're doing pizza trivia is because I have never met anyone in my entire existence who loved pizza more than... Than this woman. My goodness sakes. If you were over at her house. At all. You would either love pizza. Or hate pizza. <laughs> I personally got a little tired of the pizza. Uh, but I have to tell you. If anyone was dedicated to a food product. She was dedicated to pizza. So in her honor. We're going to do a little pizza trivia. Now we're not going to give you the answers this week. We're going to give you the answers next week because I'm giving you an opportunity to win some prizes. So uh, whoever emails me at take12radio at comcast.net and you get at least two out of the four answers correct, the first person that emails me with the correct answers are going to win the live DVD addiction a comedy of substance, substance and the CD, How Is That Funny? These are both comedic CDs surrounded around addiction and alcoholism by nationally, internationally known recovery comedian Mr. Mark Lundholm. Uh, those are the prizes you're going to get. Uh, you're also going to get gonna, going to get the 34 one-hour workshop DVD of Walking Through the Big Book, the most comprehensive study into the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous ever put in audio format. Uh, that was produced and engineered and put together by Chris Schroeder, uh, the number two most downloaded AA circuit speaker in the world, and myself. And uh, we want to send that out to you. So you're getting three prizes. All right? So 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 there you go. I'm going to explain more about this as we enter into trivia. All right. Today's topic is actually two topics. Uh, the first is, why isn't total abstinence enough? And the second is, taking off our masks for Halloween. Not putting on our masks, but taking them off. Uh, we're going to hear from our brand new sponsor, the folks at Free by the Sea. And when we come back, we're going to do Take 12 Trivia, Pizza Trivia, in honor of my mother-in-law, Henrietta uh, Pierce. And so hold on to your recovery horses. We'll be right back. Don't go away. 
Free by the Sea is a drug and alcohol recovery center located in beautiful Ocean Park, Washington. This facility is amazingly gorgeous, but what's even more amazing is the integrity of the staff and the treatment provided for those wishing to recover from narcotic and alcohol addiction. The folks at Free by the Sea have a passion for presenting the solution to addiction for you or your loved one. To speak with an admission specialist, visit FreeByTheSea.com or call toll-free 800-272-9199. This place is simply amazing. Addiction is a disease that deteriorates the body, punishes the mind, and destroys the spirit. Therefore, it must be attacked on all three of these fronts. Introducing Serenity Springs Recovery Center, a 10-acre spiritual sanctuary fostered through an intensive 12-step foundation of recovery. This is a unique facility that is committed to providing exceptional individual care in small group settings while utilizing their experienced and dedicated clinical and support staff of licensed therapists and doctors. 30, 60, and 90-day individualized treatment programs are available. Call now for your free confidential assessment, 386-423-4540. 386-423-4540. Addiction stops here. All right, welcome back, and uh, we're going to enter into Take 12 Trivia here in just a minute. Listen, Take 12 Trivia this week is brought to you by Broad Highway Recovery. Do you have a loved one that is suffering from drug and or alcohol addiction and is unable or unwilling to seek help on their own? We probably all know folks like that, right? Well, if you've tried unsuccessfully on your own, to get that individual the help they desperately need, then an intervention may be the only chance you have of saving that person's life. Broad Highway interventionists help the family and the addict through the entire recovery process. The actual event where they address the addict face-to-face as a group is only one part of the intervention going up against the deadly and cunning disease of addiction that is robbing you of a loved one and robbing your loved one of life, takes a good, solid plan. To guide you through developing a plan of intervention, I want you to call Broad Highway Recovery. Here's their number, 877-487-1599. It's toll-free, 877-487-1599. Broad Highway Recovery. Check them out, would you please? All right. Uh, In honor of Henrietta Pierce. Henrietta Pierce. How how would you do that if somebody remarries? Is it Henrietta Gultra Pierce? Henrietta Pierce Gultra. It's Pierce Gultra, isn't it? I think. All right. I know my my brothers and sister-in-laws are laughing at me right now. And they're going, yeah, you ninny, don't you know anything? No, not really. I I don't know a whole lot. I, I I know a lot about a couple things. Other than that, no, I'm pretty ignorant. <laughs> All right, um, let's cue up the, uh, the, uh, the the music for the number one most hated game on the internet. Take twelve trivia, shall we? Yes, indeedy. It's Take Twelve Trivia with your host, the Monty Man, here at Take12Radio.com. Recovery talk and positive music. All right, here is uh, here are your questions. There's four. Three and a bonus. All you have to do is get two right and be the first email. You have to email me uh, with two of the questions right, and you will receive Addiction, a Comedy of Substance, and How Is That Funny, and Walking Through the Big Book, two DVDs and one CD. Uh, and we'll send those uh, right out to you. Okay, and I, we will announce, we will send them out to you next week because next week we're going to announce the winner. This is pizza trivia in honor of my mother-in-law. Okay, uh, here are is question number one. Which of these three deliverers, uh, excuse me, which of these three delivers more pizza from call-in orders than any other? You have three choices. All right, Pizza Hut, Domino's, or Little Caesar. Here's the question again. 
Which of these three delivers more pizza from call-in orders than any other? Pizza Hut, Domino's, or Little Caesars? All right. Write in your your answer there on a piece of paper. Okay. (coughs) Excuse me. Okay. Uh, uh, Trivia question number two. A survey of over 1,000 pizza deliverers claim that who is the better tipper? Adult men, adult women, or college students? Here's the question again. A survey of over 1,000 pizza deliverers claim that who is the better tipper when delivering pizza? Adult men, adult women, or college students. Lock in your answers. All right. Question number three. Uh, There is a pizza expo held every year in Las Vegas, Nevada. True or false? There is a pizza expo held every year in Las Vegas, Nevada. True or false? Got it? And here is question number four. Remember, you only have to get two of these right. Question number four. There are five days in the United States that more pizza is purchased than any other time of year. They are Super Bowl Sunday, New Year's Eve, Halloween, the night before Thanksgiving, and New Year's Day. Okay, there's five. Super Bowl Sunday, New Year's Eve, Halloween, and the night before Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. Which one of these days is credited for more orders of pizza than any of the other four? Okay, this is this is the day that more orders of pizza uh, are, are ordered than any of the other four. Here's your choices again. Super Bowl Sunday, New Year's Eve, Halloween, the night before Thanksgiving, and New Year's Day. Got it? All right. There you go. If you missed any of those questions, rewind or slide the play button back or however you do it on your smart device or tablet or computer or whatever and uh, replay them. Be the first email to get two of those questions right. And we will announce the winner on next Wednesday's show. There you go. All right, cue up the music so we can close out Take 12 Trivia in honor of my mother-in-law, one of the most wonderful women in the whole universe. dum da dum And that's it for Take 12 Trivia for this week with your host, The Monty Man. Recovery talk and positive music at Take12Radio.com on your internet dial. All right, wasn't that fun? <laughs> uh, next week, hopefully, Nathan will be uh, be all better and be back with us, and uh, we'll reveal the answer to that, and we'll see if he gets um, any of these correct. Right, Nathan? All right, good enough, good enough, good, good, good enough. All right, um, let's see here. <clears throat> all right, this uh, this portion of the show, uh, this is uh, the uh, the first topic. Why isn't total abstinence enough? This is sponsored by Therapy Addiction Healing Centers. Uh, are you a family member? Now listen to me close, okay? Are you a family member? And, and some of you are listening. Some of my in-laws would would have been able to say yes to this at one time. Uh, are you a family member of someone who is struggling with addiction? Well, though it is not a pleasant truth to hear you are suffering as well. While Therapy Addiction Healing Center offers a family program that is designed to help family members learn about the family disease of addiction and begin on their own path to emotional healing. The kind folks at Therapy work with family members while their loved one is in treatment and continuing care. Their focus is to help you as a family member better understand the various elements of addiction and recovery. If what I just said touches a nerve... I urge you to write down this number. You can put the show on pause and give it a call, would you please? Here's the number. You ready? 855-652-4325. It's toll free. 855-652-4325. Therapia 
Addiction Healing Centers. You can visit their website at therapia.net. That's T-H-E-R-A-P-I-A dot net. All right. Um, <clears throat> topic number one for this week. Why isn't total abstinence enough? Now, these topics are both inspired uh, by uh, two articles uh, that come out of the 12-Step Gazette. Now, the 12-Step Gazette is one of the one of the best recovery magazines I've ever had the pleasure of subscribing to. Uh, these folks are great. Uh, they are also one of our sponsors. And uh, I'm just so proud to have hitched our wagon with these folks. Uh, and this first article, by the way, you can visit their website at 12stepgazette.com. Um, why isn't total abstinence enough? Okay, you know, if you're out there, and maybe you're a family member, of a person who is struggling with alcoholism or addiction. And you're probably thinking, you know, why don't they just, if they just quit, if you just separate the alcohol or the narcotics or, or the, you know, the, the improper spending or the sexual um, partner that they're maybe having unhealthy sexual addiction behaviors with um, overspending, maybe if you took their money away or whatever, whatever it is that is uh, causing them to, harm themselves and, and cause you pain, if you would separate them from that, then all would be well. Well, let me tell you that that is really uh, a, a huge misunderstanding of addiction. You can separate the person from the substance and you don't have a recovered alcoholic or addict. You don't. You just have somebody that can no longer... Um, live in their solution because their solution is the substance. Now, I know that sounds thwarted, but you have to understand that in their perception, particularly if they are chemically dependent, that's physically dependent on the substance, if it's like a narcotic or alcohol, it is their solution. You take that away without any kind of treatment or recovery process, you've got a, you got a tiger by the tail. There's a lot more going on than just removing um, what we perceive as the problem, which is actually their solution. Um, So I want to read you this article. It comes out of the 12-Step Gazette. Uh, Why isn't total abstinence enough? Uh, Here we go. Before you read this article, or before you hear it, uh, please feel free to try it out. Don't drink or drug for a couple of months. Don't go to meetings or call a sponsor and check out how you're feeling inside. Then come let us know. We can guess that just not drinking or drugging, overeating or gambling will definitely feel better. However, many of us also know from experience that there is a whole lot of other stuff going on with us that needs to be addressed. And not because we want to be perfect little sober recovering people. Why? Because our heads can still be pretty crazy. Whether it's our character defects or shortcomings that rob us from fully enjoying our new lives or the alcoholisms that old timers talk about, remove the substance and we are not all that much better. The reason for this is it's a disease of mental, spiritual, emotional, psychological, and lots of other aspects we often don't even realize. Here's some stuff we found on the topic of Is abstinence enough? Uh, Now, this comes from Narcotics Anonymous. Many people think that recovery is simply a matter of not using drugs. They consider a relapse a sign of complete failure and long periods of abstinence a sign of complete success. Well, we in the recovery program of Narcotics Anonymous have found that this perception is too simplistic. We have observed some members who remain abstinent for long periods of time whose dishonesty and self-deceit still prevent them from enjoying complete recovery and acceptance within society. Recovery, as experienced through our 12 steps, is our goal, not mere physical abstinence. I really like that. Okay, now here's uh, the viewpoint from Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, Recovery is to get back what was lost, to regain sanity, manageability, and serenity. 
According to AA, Alcoholics Anonymous is a program of total abstinence. Members simply stay away from one drink, one day at a time. Sobriety is maintained through sharing experience, strength, and hope at group meetings and through the suggested 12-step program. Well, what does all this mean? Simple. Abstinence does not equal recovery. Do you hear me, listeners? Just not drinking, just not using whatever it is you use, um, it, it, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't equal recovery. Just because you're not overspending, just because you stopped gossiping, just because you no longer bite your fingernails till they bleed, just because uh, you stopped drinking or stopped gambling, that doesn't mean you're in a state of recovered. It doesn't mean you're in recovery. That's just one piece of the pie. And I got to tell you, it's not always the biggest piece. It's not. Um... <clears throat> the 12-step recovery process is about much more than just staying off the bottle, the pipe, or the needle, or the slot machine. It is about going within, examining oneself, and making changes accordingly. Learning to live a sober, productive, and respectable life is what recovery is all about, not to mention learning how to live and enjoy life without the use of drugs or alcohol or other things that so easily beset you. I added that part. All too often, men and women obtain years of abstinence in 12-step programs and become known as gurus or spiritual giants. Sadly, they are still just as dishonest, crooked, and conniving as they were when they were drinking and drugging. This is what happens when someone stays abstinent and does not experience recovery. When an addicted person arrives at a treatment facility, on their very first 12-step meeting, he or she is seeking freedom from the bondage of substance abuse. Staying sober for a week seems impossible. Staying clean for 30 straight days would be a miracle. In the early days of recovery, refraining from the use of any mind-altering substance is the goal, and rightfully so. After a continued period of abstinence, however, there is work to be done. Many people believe once they have mastered their cravings and urges and no longer engage in the use of drugs or alcohol, they have obtained recovery or sobriety, when in reality, they are merely abstinent. Experts and experienced drunks and drug addicts agree that a person who only ceases to use their drug of choice and doesn't do anything else is in constant danger of relapse. Uh, Besides just staying clean without experiencing the benefits of the 12 steps is a miserable existence indeed. If you are a person who has identified a problem with drugs and alcohol, you must take the necessary steps to experience a profound change from the inside out. If you don't, you are not living the life of recovery and you're missing out big time. But like we said, don't take our word for it. Think about this. If the person who was drinking and drugging their way through life's problems for years and years suddenly stops using chemical substances to cope with life, how are they going to deal with things? Here's some more food for thought. If we stay the same and don't change much, well, we'll kind of be the same person, right? If we're basically the same person, the same way we were attached to drugs and alcohol in the first place, we'll probably pop up again. We'll end up using again and possibly not make it back to the rooms this time. That's why it is often said, rather harshly sometimes, change or possibly die. There it is. Why isn't abstinence enough? Because you could die. Just removing the substance isn't enough. Our problem isn't the substance, it's the lack of substance, folks. We have a God-shaped hole. That can only be filled by our creator. Nothing else. No one else. No person. No place. No thing. No amount of money. No no amount of extravagant living. No amount of going to church. No amount of going to 12-step meetings. No amount of accountability. Nothing will fill that, that God-shaped hole unless it's God. If your God is the 12 steps, I'm going to challenge you on that. At some point... It's got to go deeper than that. 
It's okay in the beginning, but it's got to go deeper. There has to be a relationship that's developed with the one, the one and the only one that can set you free from the power of addiction. Whether it's overspending, whether it's gambling, whether it's gossip, whether it's backbiting. Believe me, there are people addicted to tearing each other apart. And it's killing them. And they're losing their families and their friends. And people don't want to be around them. And when and when it comes to, to Christmas time or Thanksgiving, many families, they're, man, they're just grinning and, and, and white knuckling it through because everybody's at each other's throats. They're addicted to themselves. You know the number one topic people love to talk about? Themselves. And how how we we are right fighters and we have the right and we're 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 the privileged or we're the underprivileged or, or whatever and we just battle and battle and battle. Come on. That's an addiction too. How is it an addiction? Because if it is progressive and less treated, and it goes untreated, and the tail is wagging the dog and it's controlling you instead of you having control over it, that's an addiction. And just quitting whatever you're doing isn't enough. You've got to go deeper. You've got to do some soul searching. You've got to change from from the inside out. Uh, this is an article in uh, September, October issue of the 12 Step Gazette. You can get this magazine uh, by going to the 12 stepgazettecom And uh, it's a bi-monthly recovery news magazine. And for editorial and advertising information, here's the number to call, 215-317-8774. And uh, you can talk to the publisher, Mr. Bruce H. This guy, is, he's an incredible guy. What a heart he has for people. So check them out at the 12 stepgazettecom and, and you can uh, subscribe to it. All right, when we come back, uh, we're going to tackle uh, this second topic taking off our masks for Halloween. Now, I don't want to get into whether you think Halloween is evil or whether you think it's perfectly okay or all that kind of stuff. I, I'm, not, I'm not going there. That's, that's, not the, that's not what this topic is about. We can talk about that at, a, at another time. Um, and uh, if it has to do with recovery. Uh, and, I, and I think it could, actually. Uh, but we're going to be talking about taking off our masks for Halloween instead of putting them on when we come back. This show, once again, dedicated to my wonderful mother-in-law. We miss her deeply. Uh, Henrietta, Joe, God bless you. Oh, I love that woman. Uh, so don't go away. More when we come back. There I was in my business suit, all dressed up, just uptight as I could possibly be. And I don't remember much of what was said at that first AA meeting. It was more the feeling of the meeting itself. That's what has kept me going. I know it works, and I see the people ahead of me with more sobriety. I see how happy they are, and I want that. I want that too. And what I notice about AA is it sort of helps me to relax and learn to really be happy with my sobriety. It's a richer life to live. That's exactly what Alcoholics Anonymous does. It teaches us how to live without drinking. It teaches us how to have fun and really enjoy life without drinking. This program's given me the good life. The only good life I've ever known. Alcoholics Anonymous. It works. Look us up. Check your phone book, newspaper, or aa.org. Hey there, this is the Monty Man from Take 12 Recovery Radio. You know, many of us have attended all sorts of addiction symposiums and treatment conventions, and so much of the time we walk away from these events feeling like we've been preaching to the choir just one more time. May I suggest a different kind of substance abuse and addiction treatment event? The Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference, February 5th through the 8th. 2015 at the Weston Los Angeles Airport Hotel and Convention Center. The current field of substance abuse and addiction treatment has been evolving for almost eight decades now, and during this time, we have seen many important developments as well as many failed experiments. It seems time to step back and conduct a professional inventory 
of where we have been, where we are now, and where we are heading. Well, this conference will provide a forum that encourages professional dialogues of controversial issues, showcases innovative and creative treatment approaches, and offers an overview of the field and its future. For more information, visit www.theevolutionofaddictiontreatment.com. Join me and many of my guests as we attend the Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference February 5th through the 8th at the Western Los Angeles Airport Hotel and Convention Center, 2015. All right, and uh, some of the folks that will be there, Dr. Alan Berger from Step by Step Towards Emotional Sobriety right here at Take12Radio.com. Uh, he is one of the main speakers there, and he is really uh, the co-author of the Evolution of Addiction Treatment Conference, along with Andrew Martin. Uh, those two guys are something else. And, and if you're going to be around in the L.A. area, then please stop by the booth, talk to us. We'd love to uh, to get to know you. Okay. Uh, this uh, next article from the 12 Step Gazette is called Taking Off Our Masks for Halloween. This is courtesy of BelieveAndCreate.com and is written by J. Marie Novak. And, well, I think she really makes some great points. And, and I think this is, uh, this is vital information, not just for people in recovery, for anybody. So if you're listening to this show and you believe you're not an addict or an alcoholic. Uh, And by the way, you know, we've been referring, those of us in the recovery community have been referring to folks like you as normies for a long time. Let me tell you that I do not believe there is any such thing as a normie. I think that's an insulting statement. I don't like it. Uh, It's making us look like we're better than you. And heavens knows that's not the case. Um, I think everyone's got something where the tail's wagging the dog. I think everybody's got something that they have a difficult time getting a handle on. Whether they realize it or not, I believe everybody struggles with something. And I think we all wear masks at times. And so this is for everybody that's listening. This is for those of you who aren't listening. Uh, taking off our masks for for Halloween. Uh, and and here, here's the article. As a child, uh, J. Marie Novak says, I loved Halloween and the ability to transform into anyone I wanted to be. A mask and a handmade costume was all I needed for a fun-filled night spent wandering up and down our neighborhood streets gathering gobs of sugary treats. Wearing a mask for a night was great fun. Truth be told, they seldom stayed on for the full night. Wearing a mask after a few hours became very uncomfortable and made it difficult to breathe. More often than not, they were tossed into my pillowcase full of sweet loot before the night's end. And forgive my sniffles. I have a, I have a, uh, I have a cold, I think. So if you you hear me sniffling here, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, The article continues. Now imagine wearing those masks every day, day in and day out, year after year after year. I'm quite certain I'd find them both irritating and suffocating. I would have grown to hate them. Fast forward to adult life, and the irony is that I've been wearing all sorts of masks for years, pretending to be something I'm not, in the hopes of making my life better. I sought to belong, so I wore masks that I thought would help me fit in with the rest of you. I wanted approval, so I uh, put on masks that I believed would earn the attention and confirmation I was seeking. I yearned for career successes, so I created masks that would make me appear to be the perfect employee, the one with unlimited upward potential, often doing work I didn't enjoy at all. Convinced I was not worthy of even the smallest measure of love, I longed to hide my true self. So I put on masks that helped me betray who I thought I should be. Unhappy with nearly every aspect of my life, I got accustomed to inventing new masks 
desperately praying people would accept the character I was creating. I lost touch with who I was. It didn't work. Just like with those plastic masks with the tight elastic chin grips from my childhood, I found that the mask became more and more painful to wear over time. I couldn't breathe. I was suffocating. And I seriously doubt I was ever completely fooling anyone with those masks anyway. I'm, I know I'm not alone in this. Consider this. How many masks have you put on in your life? What are the reasons you put them on? How have they hurt you? Let me, let, me, let me ask that again, listeners. How many masks have you put on in your life? Be honest. What are the reasons you put them on? And how have they hurt you? Wouldn't it just feel better to take the mask off? One of the bravest acts of self-love you can take is to make the decision to just be you. It's also one of the most freeing and important steps along the path to living your most fulfilling life. She goes on to say, Today I like to believe that I am mask-free. Though I know I'm a work in progress, I won't tell you it's been easy because it turns out I did fool a few people who never completely realized who I truly was. So it's taken some adjustment for me and for them. I am authentically me and I make decisions based on who I am and what I want, not what, uh, what I think the world expects of me. The result is that I now breathe more easily. I smile more often, and it shows. It's been an exhilarating change that's made a tremendous difference in my life. Maybe it's time you considered taking off the masks you've been wearing. I promise you'll breathe more easily, too. Well, one of the words we throw around a lot in the rooms of recovery is the word freedom. By the way, we this is Monty talking now. We do that within our faith circles as well, don't we? We talk about it in so many ways. Freedom from addiction to alcohol and drugs. Freedom as in staying out of jails and mental hospitals, etc. But perhaps the greatest freedom we have been given, the best gift of all, has been the ability to just be ourselves. The permission to say what we feel and to not have to please people or filter every thought before we express it. One of the great things about the 12 steps and the recovery process is that if we do say something stupid or something we regret saying, we have steps 8, 9, and 10 to help us clean it up. So for this Halloween, let's all take our masks off and just be ourselves. So, you guys, listen to me. Whether you're one of those people that don't celebrate Halloween for whatever reason, or whether you're a person who just basks in it. This applies to all of us. Let's take the mask off. Um, I, I want to touch on something that she said here. She said, I did fool a few people who never completely realized who I truly was. So it's taken some adjustment for me and for them. When you wear a mask, when you pretend to be somebody that you're not, and then later people find out because you've actually started being who you really are, sometimes they get really upset because they've learned how to... um deal with the person they thought you were. And now you're really being who you are. They don't know how to deal with that. So I'm going to tell you that when you choose to be who you are and not something that you're not, sometimes you will lose friends. It's just the reality of it. It's happened to me. Um, In fact, I will tell you that I've lost my entire family uh, with perhaps the exception of one person, my cousin Pam. Um, but as far as my entire family goes, uh, when I showed my true colors and was just who I really was, they ran to the hills. They didn't want anything to do with me. They didn't know how to deal with the true Monty Meyer. 
uh, I got to tell you, I'm sorry, but I had to do what was right for me. We have a saying on uh, one of our recovery coins that says, to thine own self be true. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. If you're not being true to who you truly are, you are cheating yourself. And for the most part, you're cheating everybody else around you. If you lose friends when you take off your mask, I'm sorry, but that's part of life. You'll adjust and you'll be able to sleep at night. You'll be able to put your head on your pillow at night and go to sleep. Those who have run from you, those who have rejected you, they won't. And like we've said around recovery circles before, and I think it applies to everybody, what other people think about you is none of your business. It's not. That's God's business. What God thinks about you is really the only important issue. And I got to tell you, he loves you just like you are, warts and all. He sees beyond the mask. Whether you're wearing it or not, he knows who you really are. He created you. And he loves you right where you stand. And by the way, uh, he doesn't make too hard a demands for coming to him. It's just one word, really. Yes. So God knocks on the door of your heart, your mask, your facades and all, and he just wants you to say yes. You don't have to understand him. You don't have to figure him out. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to attend, uh, you know, a 12-step meetings galore. You don't have to be in church Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Friday, every day of the week. You just need to say yes. That's where it starts. All that other stuff will fall into place. And, and that's custom, custom ordered. And God will fit it to you. It starts with saying yes. And I will tell you, it is a whole lot easier if you'll take your mask off. Because many times, my friends, that mask we're wearing... We don't take it off when we look in the mirror. We keep it on. Because what we perceive to be who we are is too ugly for us to look at. Because we look at ourselves through, through a twisted lens. If we would begin to look at ourselves through, through our creator's eyes, we would see that we have no spot or wrinkle. Because when God looks at us, he looks at us through unconditional love. He's our creator. He's the master. He's the potter. We're the clay. And he sees a beautiful work in progress. We don't see that. We're super hard on ourselves. And therefore, we're super hard on other people. And so we wear a mask. Isn't it time to take it off? Isn't it getting really difficult to breathe inside that thing? You know, I, 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 am, uh, I am in contact with people all the time that struggle terribly um, because of the suffocating uh, attributes of wearing a mask. And yet, it seems to be too difficult for them to remove the mask because of fear. Let me let me tell you, may I suggest that you on your own power are not able to remove your facade. You're powerless over that. You can't do it. It's got you by the throat. Other people can't do it for you. Your pastor, your rabbi, your priest, your spiritual uh, uh, mentor, your sponsor, your wife, your husband, your kids, they can't do it for you. There's only one who has all power. That one is God. And we hope that you can find him now. It doesn't take too much. It's just a matter of saying, yes, God. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand how you can love me with all this garbage going on in my life. But I'm going to be real and tell you that, you know what? I'm a mess and I can't take my mask off. I need you to help me do that. Please help. 
I promise you that he'll meet you right where you are. So let's make a declaration, shall we? Uh, we're coming up on October. Whatever you feel about Halloween is really irrelevant for this show. But let's do this for the month of October. Let's ask our creator to remove, help us remove that mask so we can see who we really are. Let me tell you something. There is some wonderful things going on with you. You may not believe it right now. You may not be convinced of it right now. But there is. Sometimes when we don't feel a certain way, we need to hold on to what the truth is. Not the facts. Facts change all the time. But the truth. And the truth is, God doesn't create junk. One of the, one of the people in my life who reminded me of that all the time, even to the point of annoyance sometimes, was my wonderful mother-in-law. Why was it annoying? Because it was hard for me to hear. When she would say how much God loved me, when she would tell me how unconditional his love was for me, it was hard for me to hear because I had a hard time keeping my mask off. It wasn't her fault. But she was right. In fact, she was right a lot. And may I suggest that some of us in her circles would get irritated over her repeating things over and over again because we were uncomfortable, not because she was wrong. So let me tell you, if you got somebody in your life, like my mom, like my mother-in-law, that is speaking truth into your life, that is speaking love into your life, believe what they tell you. They're telling it to you, not for any personal gain, but because they they understand. They understand God, God's love for you. And perhaps God is allowing them to constantly tell you over and over again how valuable you are to them because... God knows that we need to hear it over and over again because we learn by repetition. So let's take our masks off this year, shall we? Let's be who God intended us to be. I promise you'll breathe more easily when you do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I, I really want to thank you all for listening. Uh, next week, uh, Nathan will be back. Uh, I'm believing that. <laughs> I'm holding on to that truth. But I want to tell you about the show that is coming up, or the show's coming up um, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, recovery musician Rob Miner, uh, gospel musician, recovery musician, a man who has an incredible ability to reach people through music, will be in the studio live. He's bringing his guitar in live. He's going to be playing. He's bringing a, a, a videographer in as well. Uh, they're going to be doing uh, some filming and so forth. It's going to be a real pleasure to have him him here. Uh, so I encourage you to tune into the show tomorrow for Rod Miner. And, and his music uh, that will definitely touch your heart. And then uh, then Friday, uh, Dwan Walker, director of midvalleyfellowship.org. Uh, this is an organization, it's been around a while, that works with people with sexual addictions. And uh, they, they approach this very carefully, very compassionately, and in love. Because sexual addiction, pornography, Unwanted homosexuality. Uh, you know, there there are people. I'm not talking about those of you who listen to the show that that consider yourselves uh, uh, gay and are perfectly fine with that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that are struggling with one unwanted sexual behaviors. They don't want it. They're struggling. These folks help them. And uh, there is a lot of inappropriate sexual behavior that many of us were engaged in when we were drinking and using. And it attached itself to us and it became a trap. And some of you are still dealing with that stuff, even in your sobriety. 
uh, Dewan Walker will be here. Uh, this is a guy who has struggled for years in certain areas, and he's going to be sharing his experience, strength, and hope, and what God has done in his life. So don't get your feathers all ruffled if uh, y- 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 you're, you're, you're a listener uh, that has made a declaration of who you are. You, you hear me say it all the time, be who you are. But I'm talking about people who struggle with things that they don't want in their lives. Those people have every right to to seek out some solutions and change their life. Just like anybody has a right to go get a facelift, right? All right. Anyway, so those are our two shows coming up Thursday and Friday. Rob Miner, recovery musician, and Dwan Walker, director of Mid Valley Fellowship. Okay. Well, it's been an absolute joy to be with you uh, today on Open Forum. And I pray for Nathan that he gets well, would you please? I love you guys. I really, really do. Our email address here is take12radio at comcast.net. Our website is take12radio.com. For those of you who are listening on the Bill Post Radio Network, Bill Post is coming up next. Don't miss out on that. And for those of you listening on other networks, other stations, uh, God bless you guys. Please tell somebody you know about Take 12 Recovery Radio. Take12radio.com. You can type in Take 12, the word, Take12radio.com, or the number, T-A-K-E-1-2, radio.com. It'll take you to the same place. And there are several ways you can listen to the show. You can click on the uh, play button on our YouTube channel. You can click on the play button. That's a, a MP3 stream. Uh, some of you don't get that, depending on the device you're using. Uh, so you can click on the download MP3 link uh, there on the um, on the website as well. All right? Okay, my friends. God bless you. Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man, and I'm wishing God's perfect serenity for you. This has been a broadcast of KHLP Recovery Broadcasting. Yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Meow.